is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service and those on the live feed. Uh, there will be no fly tonight. It resumes next Sunday. And the Junior Lutheran group will also meet next Sunday. And the Ephesians Bible study starts back on April 11th, not on this week, but April 11th. And Easter egg hunt in Cisna Park will be at 2.30 today, and that's for ages 2 to 7. They got rained out yesterday, so if anybody's interested, it's at 2.30 in Cisna Park. And Sven and Oli sends their Easter greetings today, and hope you have a happy Easter. The pastor? That's mine. Yeah, did you do this one? All right. I welcome you here. I'm glad you're here this morning on this Easter Sunday. A beautiful day outside, beautiful breakfast. Nobody gets to fall asleep while I preach, okay? So, we have a card here that I wanted to make an announcement about uh, from um, Michael and from Matthew for the gifts of, that were given for the restoration of some of the damages to their home. I'll put this card uh, in the narthex here later uh, so you guys can take a look at that, but that is a card from them. Uh, and I wanted to make a couple announcements about the order of service today. Some things have gotten changed up. And how that happens is when you can't sleep at night and then you <clears throat> stay up all night in your office and you decide to rewrite the Easter message before Easter. So now we have a few changes. So the gospel text has been changed to Matthew chapter 28 verses 1 through 7. You're able to look that up in your pew Bible if you would like, or just follow along as I go, but it won't be the same as what's in the bulletin. Also, the special music that you see following the children's sermon has been moved to after the message. Special music after the message. So, uh, any other announcements that need to be made that have not been made, just in case? Forever hold your peace. We begin our service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our call to worship comes from Psalm 16. And it says this, Preserve me, O God, for you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after other God shall multiply. Their drink offering of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoice. My flesh also dwells secure, for you will not abandon me to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Please pray with me. A beautiful day. Indeed, Lord. Many wonderful things have happened on this day. Not only in our future, but even now for us as we sit and stand here. In this holy place. In this place where you've chosen to dwell. Where you've come to meet us today. Oh Lord, reach our hearts. May your glory fill this place. And may your spirit move freely among us. And stir our hearts. Bring the fire and passion that comes with your love, Lord. And may we seek after you with everything that we have. Hear our praise and worship to you today. For you deserve all glory and honor. In your holy name, amen. At this time, I'd like to call on Dan Grabo and his family to come forward.
It is an interesting day today, for we get to do an adult baptism. Um, Dennis said this may be the first one we've done here. Is that right, Dennis, you think? That's exciting to me. So when I was talking with Dan, uh, I asked Dan, uh, you know, how it came to be that he became a believer. And he said, you know, uh, he always really believed. But it wasn't until he had gotten married with his wife and started coming to the church here that he kind of really started to follow a little bit more after that. And over that period of time, his faith has been strengthened. And as he decided to become a member, I asked him, hey, Dan, when, when have, were you baptized? And he said, I wasn't. And I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it got close to Easter, and I was like, oh, yeah. A couple things I wanted to make known for, for Dan, which I've already told him, but for you as well. I want you to understand as, a, as an adult, as we baptize him, I don't believe that Dan is missing anything from the Lord which he needs from this baptism. He believes and has been saved. And because he believes, he has received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And just like Paul talked with those people in the middle of Acts, who had received the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit already, said to them, well, if you believe and you have the Spirit, then be baptized. And so we do it based on the command in Scripture to repent, to believe, and be baptized. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them. So we do this because of the Lord's command this morning, not because of a lack of something with Dan. Also, the beauty in today, of all days to have a baptism today, we know that as we go down in the waters of baptism, we are buried with Christ in his death, and as we rise, we rise in newness of life. Resurrection on Resurrection Day. Beautiful, beautiful picture. So Dan, I would like to ask you a few questions, please. As we begin, would you please pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dan, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Do you renounce the devil in all his works and in all his ways? If so, answer yes. Do you believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? If so, answer yes, I believe. Thank you. Do you desire to be baptized into this faith today and to continue steadfast in the covenant until the end? If so, answer I do. I do. Do you promise to remain faithful to the teaching of the Christian church and to be diligent in the use of the means of grace? If so, answer I do. I do. All right, come on over here, Dan. and lean over. Dan Grable, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Lord, we ask that you would bring this man of God to a great place in faith, a place of leading in his family, a place of leading in the church, a place of knowledge and assurance of faith. And no matter how small that faith may be, may it ever be strengthened by you, Lord. We are thankful for this day and for this baptism, and we are thankful for this man. In your holy name, amen. Thank you, Dan. And you can be seated, but first I'm going to give you something. So, when we do infant baptisms here, we give them this shell. It's from Thriving. So I figured, why wouldn't I give you one? So here you go, and you probably can put it right next to your sons. This, however, is something that I'm giving to you because this was the book that changed my life. And so it's not Scripture itself, but it's about Scripture. And so therefore, may it serve you as it served me. And uh, I put the date in there 
so that uh, I'll be able to remember and you'll be able to remember we can commemorate that. So thank you, Dan. Let's sing together our opening hymn, hymn number 104. And would you please, oh, you know what, I'll just do it. We were supposed to tell, you were supposed to say, hey, yeah, I've got an announcement. We have one announcement. We wanted to say thank you. I was going to have Clayton come up and do it. Do you want to come up and do it still? Okay. We want to say thank you to the congregation for the support from the gift of Good Friday, uh, from the fly service there, and from the breakfast this morning. Uh, we appreciate the support that you guys have, not only in your prayers as we go through the, the year, but also financially. You make things happen, so thank you very much. But let's sing our opening hymn here, number 104, and would you please rise as we sing that.
Let us bow before the Lord and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From 1 John chapter 1, 19. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is because of promises like this in the word of God, from the mouth of God himself, and because of the completed work on the cross in your place, I declare to you that your sins have been forgiven. Please be seated. We'll call on Steve for scripture reading at this time. The Old Testament lesson this morning is found in Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all the peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food, full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. <clears throat> he will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And the epistle lesson today is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> now, I would, now I will remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for the sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time. Most of them are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he await, appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether that then it was I or they, so we preach and so we believe. Here ends the lessons. Again, the gospel text today comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 7, which is also the text for the message. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, thank you, 
Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothes, clothing was white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. And the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. Just as he said, Come see the place where he was laying. Go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Here ends the reading of the gospel. join together now in confessing from your heart what we believe found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. children at this time for the children's message. I can't remember who has the red bag. Oh, there it is. He's coming. He's coming. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> Thanks, Coop. I like your bow. Where'd you get a sucker? What do you think this is? All right, where did it go? Is it over here? Whew, did you pick something fantastic? <gasps> Look at your bow ties. Those are amazing. All right, what we got in here, buddy? Can I see? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What is this? I don't even know what that is. Say that. P TJ Maxx? PJ Maxx? PJ Maxx? Like M A X? Max? Oh, oh boy. Dad needs a hearing aid. All right. All right. So, is this mask. Okay. Now, I don't know much about this show. Does he have special powers when he puts a mask on? Thank you for raising your hand. What were you going to say? Does he have special powers? All right. Now, I would like to say that our Christian faith is like this. We put a mask on and we have special powers, but to some degree it's not. But in one way it is the same. 
In one way, our Christian faith, when we believe in Christ, is the same as this. While we get actually changed, there's something that is covering us that has got the power. But it's not ours. You know what that is? That's not a gecko. It is righteousness. Can you say that? Righteousness. Good job. See, our righteousness, our rightness before God, our holiness is not our own. But you know what it is? It's the blood of the Lamb that covers us just like this suit. And so when God sees you, He's happy because you're wearing the right suit. How do you put the suit on? Starts with an F and ends with an A. Thank you, faith. That was encouraging. So, everybody look up here. We need God's righteousness because without it, we're just plain Jane. But with it, with the power of Christ... We can be extremely powerful. But it takes what? Faith. Can everybody say that? Look here. Eyes here. Everybody at me. Say faith. Faith. Okay, on, let's do it on three. One, two, three. Faith. Okay, okay we're going to do it this time, but we're going to try to do it as soft as we can. Ready? One, two, three. Faith. Good job. All right. Hands out. Let's pray for faith. Dear Heavenly Lord, we come before you and we know that often our belief and our faith is weak. It's shallow. Because we're prone to wander. We're so easily thinking of something else. We're so easily distracted. Lord, give us strengthening in our faith. Grant faith to us so that it might be strong. So that we might hold on to your righteousness and be seen right with you because of what you've done for us on the cross. Not only in your death, but in your resurrection. In your holy name, amen. All right, we gotta hand out the, we got to hand out the bag, though. Good job. Thank you. You can have this back. Good one. Good one. Let's see here. Aiden, how long has it been since you've had it? Yeah. Oh. Um. Uh, all right, here we go. We'll do, we'll do Levi this week. Next week, next week you. Remind me. All right, everybody back to the seats. What about, oh, yeah, thank you for the eggs. Everybody back up here, get an egg. Now, what's the rule? No, that, that would be a good one, though. Thank you. Who said please? No, don't open them until you're in your mom's car. All right, little kids first, because they get eggs. Little kids first. Kids first. Little kids first. Wait a second. Little kids first. Little kids first. Where's your brother? Little kid first. All right, where are we at? Yeah, little kids over here. Where we got? Oh, yeah, perfect. Perfect. This only takes as much as long as communion was going to take. All right, ready? Yeah. Older kids? Oh, yeah, that was going to happen. And, Marsha, I am sorry. I, I tried to tell you I was sorry, Marsha, ahead of time. <laughs> Whose idea was this? You. <laughs> you know what, Cooper? Here, you get two extra bags because you're cleaning up. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, I am ready to share this message with you today. And uh, I finished it at 4.30 this morning. Something happens sometimes when, when the Lord gets a hold of you. 
and decides that what you thought you were supposed to speak on is something else. We heard the text from today, so I'm not going to read it again. I love Easter Sunday. You can't keep a good man down. Sometimes I like to try to start out a sermon with a, with a joke or something witty, something relational. Did you notice that there was no Sven and Oli joke today on Easter? Though they brought you a greeting, which I thought was very clever, by the way. Last minute, very clever. The reason there was no Sven and Oli joke is because today's no joke. Christ's life is not something that is make-believe. It's not folklore. My Savior's gruesome death is not some fictional fun fact. And as I am as sure as I stand before you in the flesh, Christ is risen. Thank you. Christ is risen. Ugh, there we go. Quite frankly, however, uh, I'm a little sick of how some hippity hopper uh, continues to get the limelight. Fiction should never take precedence over truth. And this, this is truth. If you are here, or if you want, and I'm excluding kids to some degree, because right now, that's all they want is candy. But if... If you want, you know, some piece of plastic wrapped, tasty treat shaped in the uh, shape of an egg, that's for you and that's out there. Today and right now, you're in here. And in here, you're going to get the word. You're going to get it in all its fullness. Have you ever wondered, why is it that we have more copies of the ancient texts of the scriptures than there are of any other copy of any other ancient literature that has ever been? And I don't mean by a little, I mean by a lot. There's a reason for that. It's because there's a God. And He is real. See, we have letters that have been inspired by God, written by men over 2,000 years ago, even older in, in, the old, in the Old Testament. And it's because there is a God that wants you to know something very, very special. Scripture is the story of redemption. It's the story of a second chance for life for mankind. Its chief character is the triune Most importantly today, that of Christ. But his supporting role, you know, when you watch TV and you've got the lead actor and then you've got the supporting roles. The supporting role, God's number two in a book, is you. Believe that? Where's Wayne? So I could look at him and see he could be looking at me with this kind of, where are you going with that? I can't raise my eyebrow like he does. Maybe I don't know if he raises his eyebrow at all, actually. See, the thing is, is that this book, this scripture, it's about you. 
because it lays out the path that was made so that you could have life. So that you could have freedom from guilt. So that you could have freedom from the weight of your sins. So that you could be free to call out to God who loves you beyond any of our minds can ever understand. Real freedom. Freedom where you get to come up front and take part in the waters of baptism. We get freedom from the guilt and the weight of our sin. It's real freedom. And the reason why it's real is because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, He couldn't give up on you. If you remember the series that we're in this Lent, up to Easter, it was all the stories, or not all of them, some of them, of people who couldn't give things up for God and the consequences that had for them. Today's message is about how God, Christ, could not give you up and the consequences for you. Beautiful, wonderful consequences. Bear with me here as we take a little walk See, in Genesis 3.15, following the fall of man, following that first sin, Satan, Satan bring, he brought man to his death. He introduced separation from God, something that they did not know. Man lost something that day. When they listened to the serpent and his lies. But Christ, Christ could not give up on you. See, there was a nation that was enslaved, if you remember. But God couldn't give up on them. And that same nation, year after year after year, would fumble. And they would follow false gods. But Christ could not give up on you. Belief waned. But Christ could not give up on you. Mothers, you'll know this a little bit more, right? The smell of a baby. There's nothing like the smell of a newborn baby. Sonny, you're supposed to have your child already, so I could have come up here and we could have smelled the baby. <laughs> little fingers, little toes, little sprouts of hair. Christ could not give up on you. Then there was an attack. See, while God was right in our face, you could, you could see him. You could reach out and touch him. The Lord of the universe, you could smell his breath as he talked to you. You could feel the touch of his hand on your skin. The Lord and master of all. While he was there. You could grab him. Even if you just touched his cloak. I'm a hugger. That's what I want to do right now. Give him to me. I want to hug him. I just want to squeeze him. You know what we did? 
crushed him. Who needs a savior anyway, right? Ah, that's for the birds. And there over in the corner, kind of watching it all go down, there was Satan. Christ draped on the cross. And in the background there was cackling and laughter. Look at your God now. Look at your precious Savior. Call himself the Son of God. He can't even get himself off the cross. What a joke. Look at the flock scatter. But then, in the most unlikeliest way, in the most unlikeliest spot, infinite power and authority is claimed. And see, it's not from the height of heaven. This is not where Christ claimed his victory. It is not from the mountaintops or even that pinnacle of the temple where Satan took him. No. No. It was from the darkness of the grave. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and all the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, and an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning. Lightning, clothed white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Mm. The earth, it shook from in its core. And from heaven, a mighty angel came. I'd like to stop for a moment. You ever wonder why an angel? Why an angel? Why not just obliterate the stone from the inside out? Right? Boom! And then the smoke, and here comes Jesus walking out like a boss. That's how I'd have done it, right? Why an angel? I'll tell you why. Jesus is no TV punk. And a Lord, a real Lord, he doesn't open doors for himself. He has people who do that. Can you imagine? The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. You know why? Because in the background you can hear some music. You know what it was? The boys are back in town. Yes, they are. Tell me, who does death fear? Who does death fear? Who does the grim reaper run from? My Christ. The living God. The one that is alive. And when Christ says jump. Death says. Yes Lord. Gotcha. What is a stone to a God. Who just raised himself from the dead. 
The guards shook for fear. Of course they did. Jesus got his muscle back. Could have called angels all the time. He didn't. Guess what? He'd be doing it now. Can you imagine if, if the guards shook in fear at just seeing the muscle? What would have happened if Jesus would have walked out of there like a boss? Christ, my Christ, you are mighty. There is not one person that has gone the distance for you. We have songs that talk about it. We use this phrase, we use phrase about it, walk a mile in my shoes. You know what Christ did? He picked up your shoes. He didn't walk a mile. He walked through life and death, and then back to life in your shoes. There's not one person who has loved you deeper. There's not one person who loved you more. And he did this so that you would have simple life. Life Christ couldn't give you up because he loves you. When I look at me, when I look at me, you know what? I don't see much to love. Somehow my wife thinks it's enough. When she said yes, she got the short end of the stick. I made sure to steal that deal up before she changed her mind. But for God, what is it here? What is it that he can love? What is it that I can offer a God? What? I have nothing. We have nothing. But for God, do you ever feel that way? God, how, how could you love me? The first chance I get, I spit in your face. Why do you love me? Here, today, he is alive. The tomb is empty. And while I can't find something to love within myself, and I know you have nothing to offer, Christ couldn't give you up. What is more beautiful than that? The God man who gave himself up for what you and I, or at least me for sure, maybe I shouldn't put you in that group, find to be nothing. Nothing. This is the God that loves you. This is the God that went the distance so that you could have life. Because he couldn't give you up. While we're all about giving stuff up, he looked and said, no. And he did what it took. This day where the tomb is empty. 
That place where your body belongs. It's empty. Will you believe? Will you grab hold and cling to the cross? Praise your Savior. For he is an awesome God. I'd like to share a song with you now. And some of you may know it. And you know what? If you know it, sing it out. Will you praise with us? If you know this song, praise with us. If you don't like to sing and you don't know this song, then just listen and praise with your heart. But let's praise Christ together.
Let's join together also in singing hymn number 111, Lo in the Grave He Lay.
Please rise. gifts back to you, Lord, and we ask that you would use it to further your kingdom. Bring glory to yourself, Lord. Bring honor to yourself. Use us, Lord, how you choose. We ask that we will not be left unused, Lord, but let us use the gifts that you've given us to further your kingdom, Lord. To bring those that don't know you to a place where they could come to know the beauty of who you are and what you've done and the joy, the joy of your salvation. Be with us now, Lord. In your holy name, amen. Go ahead and be seated, please. Here. We practice open communion. And what that means is, is that we believe that there are two people or two kinds of people that come to the Lord's table. When we come to the Lord's table, there are those who are worthy and those who are unworthy. Those who are worthy are those who come with a believing heart, knowing that Jesus lived, died, and rose again. Those people who are worthy when they come, they drink and are strengthened. But the scripture says that we should examine ourselves. And that we should test and find out, are we believing or unbelieving? Because the other person that comes is that one who is unworthy. And the one who is unworthy is the one who just doesn't believe. And that person drinks damnation on themselves. So today... If you believe, we want you to come to the Lord's table and be strengthened by the bread and wine, by the body and blood today. So the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke, he gave thanks for it. He said, take, eat of it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after he had supped and he given thanks, he took the cup. And he said, this is the blood in my New Testament. The new covenant. Which has been shed for you. For the forgiveness of sins. And do this as often as you do it. In remembrance of me. The table has been prepared. The elements are ready. We'll call on the ushers at this time to call you forward. <clears throat> 